It's rare to be able to deliver good news on climate change, but this Tuesday, an announcement was made which could seriously dent global carbon emissions in the coming years. Speaking at the UN, China's President Xi Jinping committed to the immediate end of all funding for overseas coal power plants. This is a very big deal, as when it comes to providing international finance for coal power, China is in a league of its own. You can see here far and away the biggest funders of overseas coal. Once they pause that funding, it will become much harder for governments in developing countries to get loans to fund coal power generation. There is a catch. China is as yet not making any commitment when it comes to domestic coal power. So how seriously should we take this pledge? To find out, I spoke earlier today to Sam Giel, CEO at China Dialogue and an expert on environmental policy in China. It's genuinely encouraging. Of course, we need to go much further. There's lots that uh, you know, I'm hoping we'll, we'll see sort of play out over the next few months. But, uh, but it, it really means a lot, especially because this now really means there are no international financiers of, of coal. China haven't committed to stop building coal plants within China. And I, I, I think that's, there's more emissions that come from power plants within China than the ones they fund internationally. So wouldn't that be the, the bigger deal? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the, you know, China accounts for half of the world's um, existing coal fleet at this point, and they need to go further in terms of curbing their own um, you know, brown economy, their, their uh, coal-fired power. This pledge comes uh, at, you know, a year to the day after China's 2060 pledge, uh, Xi Jinping unilaterally last year pledged to uh, reach carbon neutrality um, uh, by 2060, to peak emissions by 2030 at at latest, um, and there's every hope that it could come in earlier. Um, and in the 14th five-year plan that was uh, that that started this year, there's a plan for you know how they can uh, they, they they can increase the uh, carbon intensity, or that they can reduce the carbon intensity of the economy, uh, increase the efficiency of the economy, that is to say the um, reducing carbon emissions per unit of economic output. It doesn't go far enough in terms of putting an absolute cap on coal. And I think there'll be further pressure to, um, uh, you know, to, to, to get there. Um, you know, there's a push and pull uh, as anywhere else between sort of vested interests, between local and central governments, um, you know, between a, a coal lobby and uh, renewables energy industry. But I think this sends a pretty important signal, both globally and to, you know, China's own industries that, that you know, the writing is on the wall for coal and that the economics point strongly in favour of, of renewables and of, you know, the, the technologies that I think China broadly is sort of taking a gamble on in terms of, of what they believe the future is going to look like. This is really a signal about China positioning itself as the leading exporter of the technologies of the future that are needed for a carbon constrained world um, and really sort of riding the kind of economic wave that's coming about through waves of technological innovation around renewables. A lot of the falling cost of renewables really is owed to the scale of production in China. Um, you know, big state owned firms and, and private firms kind of competing um, and bringing down the, the the cost very effectively and very fast over the last decade or so, and it's one of the things that underlies a lot of the uh, diplomatic progress that's been made. Um, so I think this is an important signal to developing countries who might still look at coal as being cheap, as being a you know a, an important kind of aspect of their development path, to say, well, no, actually we. <laughs> you know, no, no longer really see this as a viable, appropriate kind of technology for um, uh, for development. Um, and, you know, that sends a signal really about China's intent as well, I hope. People will often, I think, rightly be cynical about all the attention that we, we hear about in you know, the United States and UK and the West, which has historical responsibility for climate change on what's China going to do. You know, China needs to commit to that. China needs to, to, to commit to this. From sort of following discourse in in China, what is Chinese civil society saying about what the West needs to do for COP26? What, what are their demands of, of us, as it were? I mean, China has a pretty active environmental civil society who uh, you know, engage with uh, Global South networks and, uh, and, and historically have been very critical or, or, or very sort of um, have offered like quite a robust critique of China's development model and really, I think, helped to push it towards one that uh, has moved away from growth at all costs and has uh, moved away from 
kind of pollute first, uh, clean up later kind of approaches. Um, and I think would have a similar critique to many, including myself, of kind of the positioning of rich countries uh, as we go into COP26, which is to say, <laughs> demonstrating really um, enormously insufficient kind of level of solidarity with the most vulnerable countries. You know, this applies also to, to large emitters like China and India and so on as well. I don't think they can hide behind uh, sort of the world's poor. Um, but, you know, as far as, um, as China's now going and kind of stepping up its ambition, we need to see a lot more from the rich countries, specifically climate finance, um, uh, you know, commitments on vaccines, on debt, on, on loss and damage, on the 1.5 degrees target. These are absolutely critical uh, questions for the world's poorest countries, which are also the, the most vulnerable. And, you know, frankly, at, at this point, you know, uh, countries like the, the, you know, the United States and the UK have no moral standing to, um, to push China anymore unless they can actually uh, sort of demonstrate um, that they're willing to go further on these critical issues. Um, because there's really, um, there, there's really no way that the, the, the kinds of um, uh, the political alignments that we will need in order to uh, in order to get to uh, a resolution can be made without, you know, the rich countries actually uh, sort of showing some some genuine commitment on on these issues. I mean, the, the um, 100 billion dollar target that was agreed at, at Paris uh, for um, uh, for for climate finance to developing countries has never materialized. Um, we're starting to see some commitments on that yesterday from Biden, and I think that's really to be welcomed. Um, but you know that, that that kind of money really needs to be um, uh, shown at this point, and I think that will really help to move the politics, and it will also um, sort of help to move countries like China out of a more traditional negotiating stance where they can essentially say, "Well, look, the, the ball is in, in the rich country's court," because you know it is, um, and and. Uh, you know, rich countries need to lead by example at this point, need to demonstrate solidarity. And then I think we can kind of move forward um, and see China also really stepping up its ambition, hopefully, which specifically means, you know, putting in greater commitments, greater ambition on their own domestic um, emissions, i.e. moving forward their, their peak year from 2030 to 2025, for example, uh, putting in a cap on, on, uh, on China's own carbon emissions, uh, maybe increasing the, um, you know, um, ambition of its own carbon intensity goals, things like that, I think are doable for China, which has a history of kind of under promising and, and over delivering on, on its climate targets. Um, the United States, by contrast, you know, doesn't. It has, a, it has a history of kind of coming into the uh, talks very, um, very loudly. And then, of course, the administration changing and, and Congress not being able to pass bills and not really being able to um, uh, to, to be good to its words. So there needs to be very serious kind of uh, work done, uh, you know, in, in the United States and in the UK as hosts to really um, uh, sort of demonstrate bona fides. So, you know, it's, 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 it's complex politics going in and we don't have long until, um, uh, until Glasgow. Uh -huh.